which is great, but now you've got uh, business things to take care of. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, Megan very, was very nice and printed out this presentation. Like I said, I'm having AV troubles connecting, but I think that makes it better since it's just the three of us, the four of us. Um, uh, but I've set this up to talk about uh, kind of creating your exhibit as if you're hosting a party, um, because I was thinking about all of the components that come together when you're when you have an exhibit space, and it's really um, all about making it fun for the people that are coming to visit you and acting like a party host. Um, so what that means, what I'm going to talk about is setting the stage, setting up your booth, the components that your booth should have, um, banners, collateral, all of that, and then I'm going to talk about actually being a host. Um, uh, so talking to people, asking the right questions, making them feel welcome, uh, making them stay a little longer, and then I'm going to talk about promoting the party beforehand, so getting attendees to join your party, um, and then the after party, so how do you follow up. Um, so the first things first is setting your expectations. So um, like I, I was just asking both of you guys, what are you expecting to get out of your next trade show experience? Are you hoping to generate more leads, more email lists? Um, are you actually hoping to get a sale on the spot? Are you hoping to set up consultations? Um, are you just hoping to have a meaningful conversation, maybe even just talk to someone about what uh, their questions are, start, you know, gathering information about what people are expecting out there in the world so that you can better align your company's um, uh, offerings to that. And then we'll talk about how, how do you want to meet those goals. So if your goal is to start a conversation, um, what do you want to start a conversation about? You know, uh, is there a technical difficulty that someone is having? Um, is there an unmet need that you know that your company meets? Um, and is there a question that kind of pointedly gets to that? Um, have those ready, have that conversation ready, um, and then you can get to your elevator pitch. Um, and then meeting those goals as far as generating meaningful leads, you'll want to set up a welcoming booth um, I have examples of what a uh, welcoming booth looks like, what it means, um, and then uh, setting your expectations will be having a follow-up plan for having those meaningful conversations. Uh, how will you continue to talk to them? And that's good to know because I think a lot of the time you'll come into uh, a booth experience and you'll, you're not sure exactly what you want to get out of it, um, and I think you might absolutely have the idea uh, the ideal to have sales generated at that point and that is a possibility but it's more realistic to say I'm going to talk to people I'm going to get an email list and then I'm gonna see where that takes me and ideally you're going to a lot of trade shows it's not just like one as your whole marketing for the year um, so you guys both have been to exhibits before I'm sure you've seen what things are what's out there in the world. You've seen good exhibits and bad exhibits. And um, what I find to be the most useful, and uh, of course, it, because they're the most revenue generated, uh, is when your booth looks like your brand. So it matches um, your brand personality. It looks like your home store. If you've got a, um, do you have a, uh, a brick and mortar? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do. So I would absolutely recommend that your booth is a mini version of that. Um, it matches color, decor, carpet. Uh, you can absolutely work with the exhibition hall beforehand to get matching and if not custom um, exhibit displays. Um, you should absolutely have banners that are custom designed. Um, I understand that there's a whole slew of budgeting requirements that can be done within that. So uh, if you're on more of a budget, there's we've done it as well where you can get um, like a really nice staples banner that's one of those pop-up uh, pull-up banners. Really nice tablecloth in our brand color. Um, and then just a couple of things that look like our office and that's worked really well for us. Um, and then the other end is to bring in more of that, um, that PayPal example which is on page 8. Um, so you can do like a full-blown couple of thousand dollar example of um, something that looks like PayPal, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so really what I want to say is that your brand has a personality, so maybe your brand is um, uh, a little more fun and playful, maybe your brand is 
holistic and natural, um, like a like an herbal remedy brand. So show that personality. Um, have items that are leaves and um, and organic materials around your booth. Like set it up to be really homey. And then um, the other part about showing your personality is. So your brand should have a voice and a way that you talk to people. Uh, the example that I have here is a client. It's actually, I have a lot of examples that are not things we did. We don't work for PayPal, but we do work for this beauty brand called Dermaflash, which is a female exfoliating, um, facial exfoliating treatment. And we went to a beauty trade show for them and um, their branding is very girlfriend. It's very um, matter of fact. Um, so you can see it's holy shit skin. Um, so we had that brand all over our exhibit and it kind of started a conversation, made people a little um, like, oh, that must be, it's a conversation topic. Mm -hmm. And we had so many people come to the booth and talk to us about it and understand that our brand is like the real deal. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid to have a personality because just like having a party or just like, you know, making real connections with people they appreciate when you're a little bit irreverent, vulnerable, um, silly, off the cuff. It, it goes a long way. The other thing... Who stood up? Who stood up? Yeah, who stood up? <laughs> um, the other reason I wanted to show this like really, really nice PayPal example is because they have couches, pillows, they have tables. Yeah, that's really nice, yeah. Um, I'd like to have all that right. <laughs> <laughs> so it can be as simple as setting up a table and chairs, um, having a, a cushion chair, something really cozy. You want mm -hmm. to, again, invite people in, like make them feel welcome, make them stay for a little while, not just, you know, you're standing at the edge of the booth, you're behind a table, it's transactional. Make them feel like you're ready to have a conversation and even ready to let them hang out for a little bit. I know we use a vent, we have a bench that we use. <laughs> There, I'm sure there's a whole science to it. Um, like when you get into these multi-million dollar um, corporations, like there's, uh, you know, allow people to circumvent, let them play at the iPad for a little bit, have a coffee over here, have a chat with a consultant at this um, at this bench, and then you know eventually make the make the contract. Um, so the point is that you want to make them feel comfortable make them feel like it was their idea to, to join you at the booth and then let them engage on their own terms. So if they don't want to sit and stay, that's okay. Um, if they do want to find out more, if they want to have a conversation with, with a couple of your consultants, um, it's all gonna be on their terms. You're gonna find people that will just come because you're giving away a free notebook and you'll find people that want to talk because you know your booth looks rea relaxing. Um, and then you are gonna find people that are, after all of that, interested in your product and interested in more. Um, and I, f I think it's so fascinating. I was just telling Megan, um, I've actually been to so many different kinds of exhibits like this, and and uh, these rules remain the same throughout. So I've been to beauty exhibits, stationary exhibits, um, technical conferences like uh, uh, like IT conferences, and then we've been to shows about design because we are design for a design firm, a design agency, working with clients trying to sell ourselves. Um, and it's all very different because the client that I just described has a different personality. But these rules apply throughout. You're trying to have a conversation and, and make a meaningful connection from that person to your brand. Um, so yeah, it's a, a mini version of your store. I have I have feminine examples, I've got technical examples, I've got um, uh, trying to keep in mind that, like I said, these rules apply regardless of what the industry is, and regardless of the type of trade show we talked about, how you guys are both doing two different kinds of trade shows. Um, the other suggestion I wanted to make was your booth can be a conversation and your people can be a conversation, but it doesn't have to be um, a, a literal conversation, it can be a piece of the environment that they're engaging with. So this is an example, uh, It's I don't even know what the company is, but it's it says, how happy are you? And you drop M&Ms in a one to 10. So this is obviously, maybe it's at a pharmaceutical conference. Actually, I bet, I bet that's what it is. That's a cool idea. So maybe it's something like, how happy are you with your skincare routine? Um, how happy are you with your, uh, 
uh, with your door solutions, how happy are you with your um, things like that. Uh, just something to get them thinking about how they might be open to making a sale today. And I'm sure you know as marketers, as, as salespeople, that oftentimes they're they're guarded, they're not ready to make that uh, connection just yet. So all you're doing is starting a conversation. Maybe it's as easy as um, we went to this one tech technical conference where the client I was working with was an IT consultant. Um, so we asked people to write down on a post-it, you know, what's your biggest IT problem? Um, and they pinned it all over the walls and then after that we had a wall of um, a wall of problems and after each of those interactions we discussed a potential solution. Obviously people pay for that solution so it was just a mini conversation um, and then we had a follow-up after so we were able to have that person's contact information and say, hey, I wanted to talk to you about that, um, that interesting problem we were having in IT if you're interested. Um, questions about setting up the stage. So I've got examples. I tried to give full gamut examples of lower budget. Um, you can incorporate your brand tablecloth. Um, have signage. Like I've actually, I've been really happy with Staples signage. Um, like I said, those pull-up brand. Um, what do you? What would you call them? Just a pop-up blind um, exhibit. Banner? Yeah, banner. I have one of those. Yeah. Um, and then we've worked with also uh, pretty inexpensive, maybe a couple of hundred uh, full exhibit, um, like pop-up exhibit booths that can be fully branded. Sorry about that. So I think there are options um, regardless of your budget. Are you starting to picture it? Yeah. Um, something I'm going to talk about later is um, like a giveaway and collateral and I think it's going to be interesting um, since your product Rachel is uh, definitely some like it's already a giveaway mm -hmm. so I love that um, I wanted to talk about actually being a host in the in the middle of the conference so uh, you're going to be exhausted you're going to be talking to people constantly do you guys man the booth yourselves or do you have no we man them ourselves yeah we uh, typically we have a fairly large booth, and we've segmented four sides. We have awnings, garage doors, okay. and flags, and so forth. Um, but yeah, we and we try to, you know, not stay in one place, congregate, and mm -hmm. things like that. And you have experts in each of those particular types of things, or yes. Okay. Um, so I like to say, be a person, not a salesperson. Oftentimes, you'll. You can tell when you're going into a booth and they're about to give you the pitch and you don't, you don't yeah, really I want to engage. I have trouble with that, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I always start with a smile. Uh, hey, how are you? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. be a person. Let them feel like, oh, okay, they're not going to they're not gonna bombard me. Because you can absolutely tell when someone is a little bit interested in hearing more or when they're, you know, not interested at all. Mm -hmm or when they can be persuaded to, you know, get the full pitch. Um, just be, be a person, be, um, and more to the point, be interested in them. I think this is what we talk about in all of our marketing. Uh, people want to talk about themselves. They don't want to talk about your brand. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always ask about, you know, what are the problems that you're, that you have in, um, in that particular industry. And then we can talk about the solutions that we might be able to help them with. And oftentimes, or maybe not often, but sometimes they just want something for free, or sometimes they'll get a um, like they'll get a raffle if they fill out a sheet for hitting the most exhibits. I'll allow it. Okay, fine. If you're, all you're interested in is a signature, you'll still get a smile. Hey, how are you? And mm -hmm. on your way. Um, you don't want to say no to any of those interactions, <coughs> but at the same time, you do want to start a conversation. So. Um, this example is another example, the take a chance. So uh, this is engaging with the booth, not just with the people at the booth. So um, these cards, I, they each have like a truth or dare kind of card, and I'm not even sure what this brand is about. But again, it's uh, like I would imagine the story that I'm seeing here is, you know, someone comes into the booth, they pick a chance card, and the, the person uh, working the booth starts that conversation with them where they say like, hey, you know, what, what does your card say? Do you want to 
do you want to talk more about that? Um, so it will, it will help you kind of engage in a written interaction, like I was saying with the post-its, and it'll help you kind of jog your memory if you want to write down what you talked about with that person, have that actual stack afterwards that you and your, and your team can input into your MailChimp, you can input into your um, marketing software later. Um, and then that'll help you not only have a good interaction in person, but have a plan for your follow-up. Uh, like, okay, we talked about this. I wrote it down. I remember who they are. I can put a, a name to a face because you're probably going to talk to hundreds of people. And I've done it. It's super overwhelming. Like, oh, man, I knew I talked to someone really that I wanted to follow up with. I can't remember what their face looks like because I talked to so many people. This will help just... Uh, for yourself and for your own peace of mind and to get a um, something out of it later. That's the whole point of this. So all, all the while you're giving to, it's all about them, it's not about you. So you're going to be giving um, collateral, giving advice, giving a smile. Um, I, things that I've seen that are useful are absolutely a raffle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, even a snack, even, you know, something useful. It, you're really, since you're hosting a party, you're anticipating their needs much more than your needs. So, um, examples of collateral that I have are these, and you can see a picture mm -hmm. of them in action. Oh, and it's cut off, so never mind. And the other side of this picture is our notebooks all laid out. Oh, sorry. Do it's you want us to wait to ask questions? No. What's up? Um, so the, are you talking about a party, like, as if I'm hosting a party, we're talk, not talking about the show right now? Right. Okay. Um, yeah, the raffle thing, I think it, you know, I think it has pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, I find that, you know, because I wasn't organizing everything into MailChimp, now I have all these raffle things, and I'm like, do these people even still want, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I'm like, is a raffle even worth it if you're going to have people writing their name down on an email list? I mm -hmm. mean, I don't know, I guess it depends on the company. Mm -hmm. I would weigh all of these options as far as what you're willing to, um, the item that you're willing to put up for raffle, because it should be good. Mm -hmm. um, iPad and Apple Watch, when those were still hot, I don't think they're hot anymore. <laughs> um, uh, like a mini trip, even like an overnight something, it should be something good. If that's not something you're willing to put forth, then don't worry about it. You can absolutely entice people with notebooks, lip balms, um, other, other giveaways that I'll talk about. And then, yeah, a raffle is a lot of work. A sweepstakes is a pretty good amount of work. You're going to want to absolutely have a, a way that you're going to tackle that list, how you're going to pick them, how, how you're going to follow up with them. Are you going to do it at the announcement? Or have you coordinated with the show beforehand to let them know, you know, hey, I'm going to announce someone? Um, or you, have you promoted it beforehand to say, we're going to have a raffle at this booth, we're going to draw at 5 p.m.? Um, I absolutely encourage it, but those are all things to consider. It's a pretty good amount of management. Yeah. Um, so if that's not something that you're uh, willing, you know, you don't have to. Something else that's much easier is um, a bit of collateral, even like a bit of candy that's custom branded. Um, it's really just about how you promote beforehand, uh, which I'll talk about um, letting people know, come by, we've thought about you already, we'll have water and coffee and a chill spot to relax because you'll have a, a day on your feet. That can be just as impactful as a raffle trip to ba the Bahamas. Oh, the other thing is it should be on brand. That's what I was going to say. Because yeah. I know we use candy, but we're not branded. Mm. I'm okay with that um, because it's uh, the brand is that you care about people that like candy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but a, a trip the, to the Bahamas might be like, I don't understand. That's, yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's really helpful, the giveaway thing. Like, I was thinking, you know, we were just talking about, like, the T-shirts, and, you know, and we were talking about, I was talking about earlier, pens or something. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? If I'm going to start branding stuff like this, find something mm -hmm. small like the pen, maybe, mm -hmm. and to start giving it away. It's a great idea. Refrigerator magnets. Yeah. Magnets are very popular. Mm -hmm. And those are probably, yeah, really We do pens, and, and, and you can always tell year to year, change a little bit. Mm -hmm. But whenever we set out the magnets again, they just seem to, we love them. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, that's so a what are, small item. What yeah, are some other things you've tried? Uh, keychains. Yeah. Uh, the small stuff. Uh, pens. Uh, no, no pads. Yep. You know things like that. Mm. So we used to do uh, carpenter pencils. 
for, oh, that's smart. for builders type thing. But okay. yeah, just and they do a lot of small stuff. And believe me, you put it out there, people will will take it. They will absolutely, yeah. And for a pencil, the investment in that is really it's minimal. It's mm -hmm. someone, something they'll have on their desk. Well, the other thing too is for kid children, you know, mm -hmm. with their parents. That that draws the kids in, and the parents are right there, so mm -hmm. that helps. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say, in lieu of something that isn't one hundred percent on brand, think more about what can I do to help these people that are, you know, just uh, uh, you know, going through a trade show. Just a, a box of chocolate, um, a pencil. I think that that can be on brand for a lot of things. Um, and so, for example, when we went to this technology conference, we had USB chargers that were custom branded. Oh, I saw um, a booth by Dropbox, which had, oh, actually you have one. I was gonna do an example, but it just sticks on your cell phone case. Cell Did you get that at a trade show? Yeah, someone was just handing them out. <laughs> it was oh, one of my favorite things, yeah. There you go. It, it, it's a little sticky, like on your phone case, but oh, I mean, yeah. it, it, if you leave it on, it's fine. It's just but you found it useful. I found it useful, yeah, yeah. definitely, because it's right there, and you can even put your credit card and stuff. I usually just use the business cards for yeah. it, but you can put whatever. And then it, it holds them in, the tab at the time? Yeah, the only thing, you know, the only issues with it is just, you know, whenever I go to use my phone, you have to make sure the business cards are either out of it or, you know, at a certain angle, and mm -hmm. little silly Get things, but I mean, it's still cheap. It. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's a useful thing, though, mm -hmm. because you don't have to reach into your bag or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, yours would be a pocket. I haven't seen one, so that's, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, at first I didn't know what it was at all, and I was just like, oh, what is this? I think I threw one away, because I think I got two oh, different yeah. ones, you know, mm -hmm. and then and then I saw my cousin had one, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is actually helpful. <laughs> so what starts to happen is, um, like when I've been to these shows, you'll see someone carrying around the, the coolest thing, and then people will flock to the booth because they have to have it, you know, mob mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, of course, you want to have the coolest, hottest thing that's on brand, helpful, all of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was not just... So we use the word collateral to mean, you know, your brochures, your business cards. It can also mean your giveaways. Um, and those sh should all be pretty cohesive with the brand that you've established. Like I was going to say, um, for an essential oil, natural beauty, uh, your giveaways, if you, if it's feasible for you, should absolutely be samples. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't worry too much about pens and pencils, but really give them a bit of the product if that's feasible, of course. Yeah, and I've done that before, but that's, you know, the question is, you don't want to give away too much. Mm -hmm. So that's why I run into issues. Because mm -hmm. some people, you know, same kind of thing with the raffle. It's like some people just want the yeah the absolutely. sample or the raffle. Some people come back. Absolutely. Yeah, the prize pigs. Mm -hmm. Definitely something to look out for. So maybe it's um, a business card that's uh, that, that's scented with a, the oil scent. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a lead behind that reminds someone uh, to come back later and also gives them an idea of the product that you're, um, that you're offering. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. Um, so yeah, these examples are uh, actually kind of apropos for a beauty natural oil brand. So I found this um, company that's branded their, well, you'll see a lot of examples of this, but their bottles, their bags, their invitations all have the same layout. Um, I'm still on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then I also found this, um, the trade show itself was marketing with buttons, uh, bright colors, um, street art festival that had, you know, all of the materials were really consistent with, I'm sure, their booth, I'm sure their website, um, and then the pins are something that's a leave behind that, you know, like I said, people are going to wear later on, have on their desk, think about it when they're not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. um, what else have I seen out there? Uh, hand sanitizer, lip balm. Um, we try really hard not to get too like junky with it, mm -hmm. um, but you can still find good quality. Like, do you know EOS lip balm, the kind of circular? Mm -hmm. You can get those branded. You can get um, like Altoid mints branded. Um, mm -hmm. You want it to be something that is actually special, something that you would use, but at the same time, uh, obviously, cost effectiveness is is important. Um, the other thing I would say about collateral is that it's not, again, it's not just about you, it's about them. Um, <clears throat> so you want to make it hard for them to throw it away. So that's why I have these examples of really nicely laid out brochures and 
and collateral. It, it should remind them about your company, um, remind them what you talked about, but at the same time, you, you want to make it uncomfortable for them to, to throw it away. It's not just like everything else that they see and everything else that they got in their junk bag. Um, questions on that? I actually have a couple of resources that I can share with you. Um, there's this online vendor called Got Print, um, which is kind of like a Vista print, and we actually use them for a lot of our clients. It's really affordable, online vendor, really good quality, good paper. Um, obviously not as amazing as your next door neighbor, your copycats down the street, um, but in a pinch that's really good quality, and they can do you know, massive volume, two week turnaround. And they print it on anything or? Um, oh no, that that's more for your paper. Collateral. Just paper and stuff. Um, I've had success with e promos for promotional items. Um, mugs, mugs was fun, but those are a little heavy, and we had several that broke. <laughs> well, that's yeah. Yeah, we did a kit for a client where it was a custom mug, a pen and um, a custom bag of coffee from Ashland Farm Coffee, um, which was fun for us because Ashland Farm Coffee is a client and then this was a client um, and we were in Las Vegas so people had no idea what Ashland Farm Coffee was um, and it was like a little, you know, post-conference treat but mm -hmm. oof, we lost a lot in that transportation. It was a heavy kind of expensive gift but it, that was what we wanted. We wanted people to like have a really good gift that took time. Um, I can talk a little bit about like the design of those items too. Do you have questions about laying out business cards, brochures, what's more important, rack cards? Well we have a we have a rack. We use utilize racks for our brochures and things like that. And then we have a like a center table. Mm -hmm. And we've tried different, you know, lining the pens up in a half yep. circle, you know, something's a little different than big pile. Yep. You know, just something that's a little fun, I guess. But other than that, there's not much you can... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I like that. Uh, make it look like, you know, something that uh, took care. You know, you take pride in it, they'll take pride in it. What's the rack? A rack card is um, a one-sided, um, I guess it's brochure size but tend to be long skinny. Okay, yeah, it's, I think it's kind of like what I, I don't know if that's exactly the size I was thinking, but the girl who's been working with me has been saying, you know, you need to get an info sheet together that mm -hmm. has all the information for all the products <coughs> and haven't done it yet, but I mean, maybe it could fit on something like that size. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be a little bigger, I guess it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just whether, you know, you know, if it would go in everyone's bag or if it would just go, you know, I guess it would go to people who weren't even buying anything too, it could in some ways, but then it might waste money. Uh, well, I would consider making that a gift. So um, if you've got a good amount of information, maybe it's larger than a business card. And again, yeah, that's those are rat cards. I just saw an example. Everything that's out there. Um, okay, I'll those are. Look. I think I just didn't know the name of it. So for example, we work with a, um, a landscaping company and we've done mailers and rack cards that not only say what his services are but it's supposed to be a give um, mm -hmm. rather than you know just listing your services so the point is that it's a calendar and it says um, like here in first week of March you should be planning your bulbs you should be planning for spring cleaning mm -hmm. um, maybe in uh, early October you should be planning for fall cleanup um, December you should be planning for uh, snow removal so it's meant to be something that someone will hold on to and right. it's helpful rather than just here's a list of our services. Yeah, so I think that's kind of what my friend was saying and I didn't, you know, I wasn't sure exactly how to go about it. Just, oh, well, you could have also on the info sheet like what each oil does and the benefit mm -hmm. and I didn't know if it would be too much because I, you know, I already have to explain each of my, but maybe you could do two-sided or you don't recommend? Yep, we recommend two-sided oh, for business cards, rat cards, use your space, yeah. Okay. So, so like maybe, a lo the long skinny ones, is mm -hmm. that what it is? Okay. Maybe it's a, a mood cycle where, like, based on your mood, what what uh, essential oil would be most beneficial? Yeah, all of my things are different. Right now I don't have, you know, there's there's more stuff I'm probably going to create and add to the product line. I do custom, like I said, there too. But, um, so, like, a, a lot of the, the mood stuff is more custom usually. It like, mm -hmm. depends on, like, I'll do it right at the booth even. Like, I'll just blend something. But the, um, 
like the general things I have like one for stress one for like allergies which I call seasonal support or whatever and like mm -hmm. one for like you know immunity boost you know sore muscle so all of those would have like mm -hmm. the description you know how to use it and then mm -hmm. what's in it but then on the back maybe I could have all the different ingredients in it and how you yeah. use those yeah absolutely and that could accompany a sample or not or maybe mm -hmm. it just smells like the oil yeah, yeah. okay Thank you. so you actually make your own I make I don't make the essential oils because to have a really high grade essential oil you really need like a huge farm. But I blend custom essential oil blends that I do. So when you're talking, I, I'm visioning your booth and there's like a little table and then you have like a little beaker set, set up to do yeah. your own thing. I don't do a beaker. I probably should. Well, Sometimes saying, stuff spills. <laughs> what I'm saying with different colors. <laughs> That yeah, would be thinking. helpful too. Yeah. I mean, right now it's just me just pouring the stuff, but it would be helpful to. It would probably look pretty if I had them in different. Or different, even doing colored yeah. colored b water bottles, and then whatever you're working with. That would be that would be a cool like cool idea. idea. Like a little more like a chemist kind of like well, setup. Well, I'm just <laughs> it's a funky yeah, idea. I love that idea. Yeah. <laughs> At least the colored colored bottles would give you. You know, I don't like know. I assume you're having a smaller poop. Yeah, it's just a right. table, and I've done okay. farmer's markets for the past two years, too, which I'm kind of, like, almost about to quit because, you know, first of all, I don't have a tent, which this is probably yeah. part well, of the issue. Yeah, but, that's. yeah, and so that's something I may, I just, you know, it's either I get the tent or I stop doing, you know, outdoor markets with with hot, I mean, not they don't get that hot, I put, a, you know, an umbrella on them, but it, it's not the best, like, what you're saying, like, to draw people in, like, I've had a woman, like, this summer come up to me, she's like, whales in the heat, like, she just said that, mm -hmm. and I like well maybe I need to rethink this like I do have people that buy stuff and it, you know it's, I'm only out there for a couple hours in the heat but it's, and it's just because I'm one person and it's like I didn't right. really want to have to struggle to put the tent up but now it's like okay well what's the best use of my time and money like if I don't have a tent I probably shouldn't be going outside you mm -hmm. know I should just yeah. do indoor events and online you know I mean it's, it's I mean me, a though. single single person with that then like to draw the people in that's what I was thinking you, you, I assumed you would have like a single table. That's all I have, yeah. Is with a table. drape cloth over it? But or? yeah, yeah, so with a tablecloth, and okay. I just ordered a new one. I'm, I don't you know exactly what it's going to look like when I get it. Hopefully it'll be longer because I was using just a blanket, and okay. I realized that a lot of times the blanket wasn't long enough to cover all my stuff underneath, like all my bags, and someone mentioned that to me at an event. They are like, just get a tablecloth, and I was like, I don't know why I didn't think that. I was just using like funky looking blankets thinking that was fine, but like, you know what I mean, as you as you go, you're kinda just like kinda so you're basically Learn working out of like a, a, a pop up size. Yeah, I can go I, I go can go anywhere. But yeah, the tent, yeah, I, I do have to kinda consider that too. But but the um but the table is pretty you know, it's just it, it might be a ten by ten someplace. Eight by, it might be, you know, eight or when it depends you know, I have my own table, I think it's a ten by ten, but it depends well, on the Well meant that's how I was just a vision it's the, the you know, the, the table tablecloth. With your signage and everything, and then yeah, either scent and color to draw the people in. Yeah. yeah, and that's the thing, like that you know, as we're talking, like I mean, even before I came here, because I was like, I had an appointment that I re like rescheduled because I was when I saw this event, <laughs> she emailed me. I was like, I probably need this. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm really glad I came. Um, writing down the beaker thing because it's a cute idea, but um, yeah, engage them. Well, yeah, just for color because I. Well, that's the thing because everything's like purple. You know, I had like you know the sign I have like the same as my card and then I have like some lavender you know herb like you were saying out I'll put some out but I don't necessarily I'm not the best with display stuff so I I know I need like maybe some you know maybe like a bigger bunch of lavender not just like strew it right. strewing it all around the place and like maybe um more layering because I noticed like a lot of people you know at the expos like or not not layering what do you call it um just like <laughs> you know making the height Oh, just yeah. more height, oh, sure. like like yeah. other people who do jewelry and stuff. They have all these like boxes out. Like the girl next to me last year at the Total Life, like her stuff looked great. She had all these like you know huge things, and and mine just has like maybe like most of it's on the table, mm -hmm. and then maybe one or two layers. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, you know, if it's just boxes, then mm -hmm. I could just do that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it could be easy as um, crates, like wine crates. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just create textures Staging and different height. or something. Yeah. Put a blanket, a scarf on a couple of them. Yeah, it seems simple enough. It's just not something I've really played with much. So, yeah. Definitely getting yeah. me thinking about it. Thank you. Get you um, thinking about it. That's, that's, that's No, I want to because, I mean, I have an, an event in three weeks or two and a half weeks, whatever it is from now. And I'm trying to at least get the, the labels, you know, those branded. Um, which what we just you know has taken a while, and I I'll, I have my banner mm -hmm. and I have my cards, and then if I can get like you know like whether it be shirts or you know 
bags. Bags, mm-hmm. may you just want with a sticker, a sticker or something. But I was thinking like it'd be nice to have like a professional looking bag for like people oh, to yeah. purchase. Oh yeah, love a tote. Yeah. yeah. Um. So things so like that. Events, but yeah. yeah. So as much as I can get done for the next event, but like then even looking to total life is, you know, I could kind of plan even more. You mm-hmm. know how, how far I can get with all these things. But yeah, it's all good advice. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um. A, a pin might even be something. Are those cheap? What are these little? Or these are these are bottle caps. But but do people happens. use pins? I mean, I don't really. If think. they're cute, people will use. That'd be cute. Of mine, cute. And my we, pin. We branded ours. Yeah. It's, okay. Again, it's it's just you know. Yeah, I would say as, as long as yeah. it's something you would use yourself. If it's something you know, I want to take home. I want everyone I know to have one. Um, just make it like useful. <coughs> Yeah, I think pins and magnets and pencils are all good ideas, but also just just sending a card. Like it could, you know, you know. I don't know if I'd want to give away one of those things or just or right. even sell it. You know, if somebody might just like the image. Yeah, that's Especially what I was thinking water. with the shirts and things. Oh, yeah. I was just thinking like if somebody want if somebody likes the oils, they want to buy a t-shirt. You know, oh, eventually yeah. that's probably would be a cute shirt to have. It would, yeah. Anything as long as it's. Um, Cute, different, and unlike <coughs> something that you could, you know, get anywhere else. Right. Um, I will Thanks say we've me. had a lot of success when um, we're positioned near the front of the room, mm-hmm. and we're the first ones to give someone I've a tote. I've had that too, like with just in general being positioned in the front. Well, of course, but um, like I've noticed, if we're in the back, no one wants a tote because they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I already have a tote." Oh, right, right. right. Or they, I already have blank. But if you get the, <coughs> you know, thinking about the kinds of things that they're going to want based on where you are in the mm-hmm. exhibit space. Um, but yeah, if you give them a, a tote right away, then they're like, oh, you're anticipating their needs. So <coughs> works well. I have so many good totes, so many bad totes. Um, I guess that's that's on me. I will keep a tote even if I hate it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got rid of some recently, but you know, you need them for groceries and things. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, okay, so I've talked about uh, what your booth looks like, how you're going to, you know, portray yourself in the booth, um, the types of items to have in your booth, and then I now I want to talk about how you're going to promote beforehand, how you're going to get people to show up. Um, so just like today, I would have been well served to promote this event on social media or via email. <clears throat> so you want to tell people exactly what they're going to expect without giving away everything. So maybe if you have a raffle, uh, you want to say you have a raffle, say it's going to be um, maybe if it's an iPad, you could say it's an iPad. If it's something um, uh, smaller than that, you know, give them a little tease, but don't give away the whole thing. Um, really, you just want to build anticipation, get them to want to listen to you again without it feeling like marketing, without it feeling like uh, you're bombarding them. So I have these examples. Um, Social media places that I've been looking a lot at are South by Southwest, which is an event, uh, the Newport Folk Festival, which mm-hmm. is an event. Um, these guys are, it's obviously a music festival, so they're really good at saying, hey, we're going to have this one band once a week. I'm letting you know who's going to be there. Really building anticipation, um, letting people have an expectation for what it's going to be like. And since we're hosting a party, we can do this on a smaller scale. Like, Hey, did you know we're going to have buttons? Hey, did you know we're going to be give, giving away a raffle? Um, we're going to have some really cool and interesting things. You know, stay tuned. Um, and I have this example of an email from J. Crew. And again, everybody knows it's marketing. Everybody knows it's an email. I'm sure you get 100 emails a day. And I have a whole presentation about setting up social media and a whole presentation about setting up email. Um, so I'll distill it into what we've already talked about, which is... Um, Make them feel uncomfortable throwing it, throwing it in the trash and make them feel like you're giving them something special. So really quick, three reasons um, you want a personal shopper. That's from J. Crew. So to make you look good because you're busy and because it's complimentary. So you understand, you know, you're busy, I'm busy, uh, it's complimentary. Just take a second, look at our booth. If you're there, you know, I'm sure you can benefit from No that. pressure. Yeah. I mean, where is this? Or are you saw on the sheet? Uh, it is here. This is the J. Crew email. Oh, oh, we can't see it. Yeah. 
So they, they offer personal shoppers? Yeah. So exactly, that's why I love this example because it's, uh, you know, maybe your people didn't know that you offered free consultations. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they didn't know that you offered samples. So, hey, you're letting them know and finding out where they can find you. Like, okay, I'm on board, where do I go next? Free estimates, yeah, mm -hmm. we offer free estimates, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something to promote, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say, uh, so one of the topics that was on deck to talk about was, you know, which social media platforms to go to for this type of thing. And I would say go to the social media slash marketing platforms that you use uh, for anything else because there's not something special to your exhibit um, promotion. It's more to your brand promotion. So if you're if you've got an active Instagram, if you've got an active email list, use those people that are already or engaging Google. with you. Google, yep, Google AdWords, Google Search. Um, so when we talk about social media and email marketing, um, I'm going to say it again, I'm going to hammer it home, but it's always more of a give than an ask, and asking someone to come to your booth is a pretty big ask. So that's why we want to have so many more gives around that. You know, what will I get when I get there? Don't just say, come to our event, because people are going to be like, what's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Um... Questions on using social media to promote? So I've been on kind of a bind on my Facebook, and I don't even know if you can help me answer this at all yeah. because it's kind of crazy. So I started off actually just selling oils for one of the network marketing companies. Okay. So my, my oil paid, and I used those oils for the, this, the um, my products. Mm -hmm. Like I use the doTERRA oils, but I don't, technically they don't want people talking about it like if these are doTERRA oils. So I just okay. say ther therapeutic grade oils, right? Okay. Um, and I'm actually using some from an, another company too, just because I, there's a couple of oils we didn't even have that I want to use now mm -hmm. um, for the blends. And so the oil page, like my main Facebook page, started off being like to sell for the company. And but the majority of the people on that page have bought stuff for me at booths. And so okay. it becomes like this weird thing where I'm like, and then I set, made a separate page, like one of the business pages, like for mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. But that you have to pay to like promote so I think yeah. I you know I tried a couple times this week like just to promote the next event coming up and like mm -hmm. I think I got a few more likes or something but I mean I don't you know what I mean it's kind of just like I'm in this bind where it's like do I just make a new page completely or, that's why I'm kind of trying to focus on it's the website personal? like it's it, attached to your name it's Rachel's oil page my okay. Facebook page and then I have another one that's a business page Rachel that's okay. healing therapies which yeah. no one is really on it's like 100 likes versus like 950 likes yeah so these people see like and, I, and I'm more active on the group page because the group is much easier to get people's attention mm -hmm. um so maybe just creating a new page once the website is up might be the best way because at this stage it's like I mean it, it, but I'd have to track all the people because those people have yes. all bought for me at yes. some point um, because it's just like it's gotten so chaotic that I'm almost, I'm almost just like backing yeah. away from the whole thing yeah. with the Facebook anyway. Um, <laughs> we believe in doing things the right way, so there's definitely a, a way to move those people from uh, if they were you know friends that you connected on your personal page, if they were connections on a group, you want it to be on a business page, just like you said, you're mm -hmm. establishing like that if this is a business it's getting more official um so ways that we do that are through facebook ads like you said you were playing with you can have demographics of people that are followers of that group um you'll definitely want to make sure that you have everyone in your email list market to them yeah the email is where i think you know once that's all squared away then i think that that's i mean i've been sending out emails to you know whoever's on the list mm -hmm. uh, you know for now but but i think that is definitely like will be the people that actually come to things right. that actually, you know, whatever. But at the same time, we want everything to to just be making sense. And, right. You know, and not, like, wasting time posting right. something or, or being, you know, or thinking, oh, wait, this isn't the right place to post this. Right. So, but you're saying that the business page is preferred even though yeah. they do charge you, like... They only charge you if you decide to boost the post. Right. Which, so, yes, it's going to be monetary in order to be successful because they'll... You know, uh, they really won't promote your posts unless you put money behind mm -hmm. it. But I still think it's the best way. Um, the other thing I would say is, um, you know, train people to not use these platforms that are not uh, the main pages anymore. So keep your business page the most active, post mm -hmm. that the most officially, and then on these group pages say like, hey, we've moved here's the link yeah I just feel nervous that not as many people are going to see it still as the group page because it's see I mean I don't know there's just so many more people over mm -hmm. there and then I, I invited most of them onto that page but mm -hmm. you know 
how many pages of mine do they want to be on? That's the other thing. <laughs> so yeah. now I have to figure out how I'm gonna, you know, manage that. Um, I guess I could just yeah maybe announce it. I don't know. I mean, there's definitely an argument to be made that they're serving two different purposes. If the group is having a discussion, that's a nice closed Facebook uh, tool that you can continue to have. Mm -hmm. If it is more of promotion, like when are my events, what's, what are my you know daily sayings that are social media fodder, um, that's definitely on the business page. There's an argument to be made that both are active and both are maintained, but it's up to you to decide which is the most important, or if they both are, mm -hmm. and maintain them both. Okay. Now, were you referring to get Google Analytics before? Um, I wasn't, but okay. uh, in reference to what? I just, when you were talking, I, I don't know if you were referencing as part of Google Analytics. Um, like the, uh, the demographics on, yeah, and the, on Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of analytics and uh, it can be tied between your website and Facebook and Google. Um, so yeah, we do use a lot of Google Analytics to see who's coming from Facebook to mm -hmm. our website, what are they looking for specifically that's different from other things. I could give a whole talk about Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a wonderful tool to see what your demographics mm -hmm. are, what they're looking for, where they're finding you. Um, and what they're doing when they get to your website. And then how can you delight them more by paying attention to what they're clicking on and doing more of that. I love it. Um, okay, so other examples, really quick on social media, like it goes without saying, but sometimes it doesn't go without saying. Uh, tell them explicitly the date, time, uh, booth number, and even give them a taste of what the color scheme is. You can probably tell you know, in a slew of other exhibits, uh, things that are bright yellow stand out. So that should go in line with your branding. If those are your brand colors, you know, let them know what to expect, at least a taste of, look for the booth that's all black and yellow. Um, okay, so the last item about our party was uh, the after party, how to follow up afterwards. So <clears throat> uh, throughout this, conversation, you've been taking down business cards. Um, a lot of exhibits I've seen have a piece of technology that they'll give you where you can scan cards and it can be really easy for you. Um, that might not be an option at this point. So, you know, you could have a notebook where people sign up for an email and yes, you're going to have to be kind of pushy about it. Like, hey, did you, did you write your email down? Did you give me a business card? Um, and again, make a note for yourself. What did you talk about? Like, hey, that was Rachel. We talked about oils. Um, I'm going to follow up with her uh, in a week to, you know, ask how things are going. Um, and yeah, take the time to put it into your email contact list. Take the time to um, uh, write that note down, put it in a safe space because those connections you've made are really what this conference was all about. Um, and when you follow up, uh, maybe Maybe you had like three, four, five people, 20 people that you made really, really good connections with. Um, maybe they get a handwritten note that, uh, that goes in line with your brand, that goes in line with um, how you want to say thanks for, for stopping by. I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, and then make a call to action or a, a next steps. Um, like if you'd like to come in for a free consultation, we can schedule that this, this, and this, um, or if you'd like to uh, get a sample kit sent your way, I can arrange that. Just give me your um, your address, your details. Um, you're establishing a relationship, establishing trust, establishing that you're willing to give, not just ask of them at every stage. Are you talking about mailing a handwritten note or giving it to them at the time? You don't have to do it at the time. I would say afterwards. This is all, what are you doing after you've established a first impression? What's your second impression? So this example is kind of goes in line with um, other examples I was talking about. So this is a, a mural that people at the booth, you know, they were given a pen and they drew pieces of the mural. So at the end of that conference experience, they could email. They could email and say like, "Thanks for drawing," and look at what we all made together. So it's a really, it's a small but meaningful connection that you've made with your. Uh, with your party goers uh, to just say thanks, remind them of something that they participated in, and then follow through with next steps. Like if you want to schedule a demo, um, send a free sample, set up a consultation, 
uh, given estimate, all of those things. What about like for the email list? I mean, because I've been doing the paper list for a long time, and obviously the Mailchimp will help when I get them in there. But is there like a you know, say you had like a tablet out or something, would there be a way for them to just directly enter into one of the, like into Mailchimp? Like, would, mm -hmm. and if I say I put out something like with a screen, mm -hmm. like, I don't know anything about that. Yes. So um, Mailchimp allows you to set up your lists. Like maybe your lists are uh, free sample people, people I met at trade shows. Um, and then my friends and family. Right. So you can have a form that MailChimp will generate for you where someone can say, uh, you know, here's my email, my first name, last name, which list I want to be on. Okay, so I can have that out, like, somehow, just out of show. Yeah, you can have that on an iPad without... Or a computer or whatever, yeah. Yeah, anything. Absolutely, great idea. <coughs> um, yeah, and don't be afraid if they gave you their business card, if they gave you their email, don't be afraid to follow up because that's pretty much saying that they're interested. <coughs> um, so give them a call, but only if you feel like you had a, something to talk about and can have that meaningful conversation. Um, but pretty much they said they were interested, so ask them on a date. Um, I think the follow-up is one of the most important things here. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> uh, like I said at the beginning, you can absolutely have a goal to generate sales right on the spot, but um, uh, barring that, you can have a sale the next day. Yeah, I find that the reason I really got to the point where it's like I need the website is because, you know, I have, especially if I'm just at like, an, if I'm just at events, like, I mean, you have a shop, or you know what I mean? Like, it's like if you're just at events, then they want like a refill or something, like, mm -hmm. they, they might say they're going to contact you, but then right. it's like... You know, at least they need somewhere to, to order that refill. Right. You know, because I've, I've even had people, you know, text me and be like, oh, I really want to get that. I said, okay, you can just go on PayPal and, you know, because they don't live around here or something. They yeah. just were in town for something. Okay. And it just seems like even too much for them to go too to PayPal. To ask, yeah. Like, they want, like, something simpler. Right. I don't, I mean, I don't know if that would go for everybody, but that was, the like, the past couple experiences I've had where it was like, I mean, I think a website would obviously be better. Yeah. But Because that's, that's all, I, the only thing I have now is the option for them to PayPal, you know. Right. Yeah, if, see whatever, you know. Um, the, if that's a consistent problem that you're seeing, uh, then it sounds like, yeah, oh, just drive them to the website and say, hey, it's super easy. Um, you're not the only one with this problem. I've got a solution for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people love that. Anything else? Any questions, ideas? Hopefully I, I sprouted some ideas for you guys. I don't know. I don't know about her. I mean, this is a lot of stuff we do already, and it's a lot quite different than what you're doing. Yeah. Because I do, I do some uh, sh single shows with a single table. I've already got, i already got ideas for you. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we'll help each other. I don't know how much I can help you, but I mean, I can help you with a blend as a reward. <laughs> you know. It can be a, a dual booth. Um, you know. Or I just. Or well, that's it. I mean, it's pretty. It's it's we're like. Opposite I'll reward him with a bean blend for his but, contributions. <laughs> I love it, yeah. Well, I mean, or whatever. I, I don't have any more questions, per se. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do a lot of this stuff already. Cool. Mm -hmm. and, and, and But I'm, again, thinking of her, and I'm, I'm just envisioning, what, what size table do you use? It's just like a 10 by 10. Right. So would you use a four foot table, car table? I think it's, I don't know. It's like a like, six foot? Yeah, it's like a six or eight foot table. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure. Again, I'm just... I'm yeah. thinking a, a six foot table with a uh, black or whatever color scheme you're gonna use, uh, black tablecloth to cover. Then you had said you had a banner. Yeah, and the banner I usually just put on the bottom, like on the front of the table. But depending on where I am, because sometimes you're not next to a wall or whatever. Right, to, depending. So, so whether depending. you put it there or in the back. Yeah, it depends on where. But then this drawing him in. I was thinking of two can be fake plant pots. With mm -hmm. color in them, mm -hmm. and then you can have your your bottle staged up high. Mm -hmm. I got Those it. are good yeah. ideas. No, they're all helpful <laughs> ideas. I yeah. do need more plants. You know, I mean, it's something. something that it doesn't have help. to cost a lot. Obviously, no, no. I mean, I need. Yeah. I, need yeah. I mean, it's definitely. It's, it's definitely natural. to the point where it's. It's. I've done enough events where the quality of the product is so high. which is why I have to like you know get the branding of the you know the bottles too to a point of you know just being more consistent. It was just like. 
the people that you know try it or that they you know they know it they're gonna you know they'll smell it they'll they know essential oils then they'll buy it but the, but to attract other people I'm realizing because I'm not a design person like that's the stuff right. that I have to work on which is why I came today well, I think so she had it it's just the, like all on the card itself I thought it was that's great well you said something that reminded me you know engage the senses if it's right smell of coffee smell of essential oils um yeah. Something that's that's I was what I was thinking of too. The color. No, the, the color is the color is a huge things. thing. Color and the and the height are the things that I definitely need to work on and just making it look nice overall because it's not it's not my strength. My strength is not the display. Mm -hmm. Like I I you know, I've made a lot of progress from, you know, having no labels, just sticking on like, you know, like right handwritten, like mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> Uh, to to where I am now with having labels and business cards and you know uh, yeah. a banner, but there's a lot more to do. Well, you know you're not going to drop two thousand dollars on you know. So mm -hmm. I'm just thinking things right. like that. You know, two potted plants with fan nice color in them. No, I agree. You know, yeah, you the beauty put, is that it's natural. So yeah. you and then like yeah. she said, with the boxes you could just stack boxes right. and put colored water. I agree. Like, yeah, colored yeah. water you can find boxes. Yeah, because right now, like I said, I just had some like lavender and some like sage, you know, just out in some of it was it looked nice. I mean, some of it was in shells and some of it would just be like lay, you know, laying on the table, but it wasn't anything large. It wasn't there, not all my stuff is so tiny. Like, you know, I have these, you know, like jackets the label is not even on the one I have with me, but you know, it's, it's like a torn off label, but but um Without the label, oh, yeah. you can see like it's just like there's just roller bottles and the, my, even my scrubs like they're not huge sizes. My lotions are pretty small. Like that was actually a suggestion my friend had too. She's like maybe we need to just start baking like bigger size lotions because oh, yeah. every she's like are you using these for hands? I was like no, they're body lotions. Oh, <laughs> but okay. they just I'm just selling small containers and mm -hmm. things. And obviously the the price point isn't high either because everything's tiny. Mm -hmm. These you know. Um, now that I'm reevaluating my costs, probably gonna up the prices. You can smell this too often. Mm -hmm. Do you have the but, option um, to go bigger? Oh, that's nice. Well, the thing is, you know, people only want to spend a certain amount of money. I have to. I'm, I'm going through all the prices right now, um, mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of just gonna depend on you know where I get to. Like you know, something like this peppermint orange is gonna be a lower cost product than something like frankincense and myrrh, which is the more expensive right. oils. Mm -hmm. And I was only doing like 15 to 20 when really I should be bumping the prices of like a frankincense one up to like $35 yeah. or something like that. So that's the kind of thing that like will help me in general, like to make more revenue and, yeah. you know, but, but the thing, you know, this obviously I wouldn't put out, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, to have this wrapped around it, it looks a lot better mm -hmm. than, you know, what was here was just like, it just said focus blend. Right. It didn't say like Rachel Beth or anything. Well, with an essential oil, I think people come to expect that it's going to be really tiny and precious. Mm -hmm. um, so you've instilled that value that it's, it's already something like that's very, you know, honed, custom made for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie always has this example when um, Moroccan oil, when argan oil was like mm -hmm. a new thing. She spent like $50 on this tiny, tiny little bottle. And who knows if it really works or, but it smells amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, and it feels like something that's really special and sacred. And I think, you know, you've it instilled that value for people. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, people were saying, they were like, I've the labels make a huge difference one of my friends was saying he was like he was like i just bought a bunch of candles just because they're labels and yeah. he's like he's like i don't think it's working for you like over the summer you know mm -hmm. like when you know i had labels on them but they weren't anything special mm -hmm. they didn't have like i mean i don't know if this is going to be perfect either but at least it has my logo on yeah. it so. yeah as long as it's consistent and um you know creates an experience we say are you um uh, like what's the five year plan? Are you gonna start a brick and mortar? Get sold in stores? Yeah, so that's that's kind of like, like a million things yeah. I'm trying to deal with at the same time. I feel like right now because all of a sudden I'm doing the work and I wasn't doing the work before yeah. at all. I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna do this. Um, but but yeah, I'm trying to like. First of all, I haven't I haven't gotten it set up as like a DBA or LLC, so that's the okay. first thing. Yeah. Um, you know, and some people are like, oh, you can sell online without it or whatever. But I've already been asked to sell in some stores, including right. like, you know, I work for the Mohegan tribal government and I met with like the legal department about like, you know, what would I need to sell in the pharmacy there? Cause they now have their own pharmacy. Right. And you know, he was okay with, you know, my labels just having the ingredients and stuff like that. But places like that, places like Mashantucket museum have asked me, you know, you know, 
being a Native American person, I have that niche yeah. where it's like I have not only the essential oil, but I have like a product that's made by a Native American person. I mean, that's an herbal product. Mm -hmm. So I need to get some type of tax ID, whether it be LLC yeah. or DBA. But the reason they were recommending the LLC was because of like you know if someone's allergic. Yeah. So that's already like in the cards, the, sh the store thing. It's just I haven't made that step. Eventually, I'd like to have like my own center one day. You oh, know, yeah. but that's probably not even going to be five years. It's yeah probably even longer like 10 good you niche. Know? yeah that's but um, absolutely because i do other other like education work on you know um i do like i i work for the mohegan tribe as a librarian but i have a background in like history and stuff like that so i do public lectures and now i'm doing more like um i do like native american food demos and workshops oh, so, so cool. like my vision is to have like all of it like yeah kind of you know in, in like a future kind of wellness place where yeah. you can do like cooking and other things um yogis and mm -hmm oils and all that mm -hmm. massage but but yeah I think you know I haven't really thought about just having a shop for my stuff I, I even was looking at like an office space recently like because I was like should I get an office like because it was cheap it was like if you split it with somebody it was like 150 bucks a month but mm -hmm. I'm like no I think like for now I should probably focus on getting these things accomplished first but it would just be ni it's always nice to have like a space yeah you know oh, that's yeah. not your home to do the type of things because it, it does it just becomes so much like at your house you know around. like yeah. you have all this stuff yeah you know and like i can't work in my li in the library right. you know <laughs> like my books would kill me yeah um can't so it is on the books if i get somebody to split it with me it is it isn't a bad thought it's mm -hmm. just but yeah i mean i think right now the goals are like bettering the display yep. and the website and the email brand. list yeah those establishing things your people find yeah. your demographic yeah and then you know because i mean i have a ton of people who bought stuff for me again it's just like the following up with them you know, mm -hmm. you know so I'm, I'm pretty good i'm not bad at following up but mm -hmm. it's just like when you're in the middle of doing a, an event like sometimes they'll write their names on a list the last thing you want to do is start going through the list so mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you heard what i was saying to her about like having a screen like that would be oh, well, even easier tablets i mean yeah there's all sorts of well i have like a, yeah but like to have someone be able to directly just enter their email into the list would be like super helpful it would just be one less step yep for me you can oh, do yeah. that with mailchimp yeah so i'm just thinking anything to simplify at this stage because it's just me i mean i sometimes have somebody you know occasionally a friend will help me but it's i can't rely on anybody at this stage yeah so it's just <laughs> it needs to be as streamlined as possible mm-hmm where do you give, um, like, talks about food and uh, is that at? Different places. So I'm starting, you know, to do more. I mean, it's, it comes in waves now. I'm trying to do more demos because I have Serve Safe too. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, even another thing. It's, like, you know, the doTERRA oils, you can actually put them in food. So it's, like, should I start selling olive oils with, oh, like, you know. Yeah, but I don't know. People oils. might, yeah. like, be a little. Well, some people are hesitant to, you know, with essential oils, which is understandable. Yeah. Because there are only a couple that are food grade, but it is okay. a thought to like expand to like doing olive oils because olive oils are a Absolutely. thing right now. Um, but yeah, so I have the serve safe now. So now I'm, I'm not just doing talks. I'm starting to do actual workshops. Mm -hmm. um, before I had like written a paper about the history of Native American food, and oh, cool. I also like did my masters on oil tradition. So I, I just give talks at sometimes at a college class, you know, or sometimes at just like a local historical society. Very cool. Um, so I've done a bunch around here, but the one coming up is in New London. Um, I think they're having a St. James Episcopal Church. Okay. Um, but I have your email. I can send you the info. But it's like a maple. Sh it's gonna be like a maple sugar Sounds cooking so workshop. I yeah, it should be fun. I think it's yeah. free. And it's just by donation, okay. which is kind of like I need to stop doing free stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but since this is like one of my first like cooking workshops, I yeah. feel like I'm just gonna get be getting the hang of it. You know, yeah. it's not like something I'm used to just doing. The, I mean, yeah, around, so. yeah. I mean, some people had suggested like, can you combine the two? I'm like, I think it's a stretch personally. Yeah. I think for the website, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna have different sections. That's what we're, that's kind of where we're struggling. I think because I have these two different things going on, mm -hmm. and we're trying to like. You know, make a section for all my talks mm -hmm. and demos, and then a section, and then this will have a, the same kind of thing. I do classes. I'm gonna. I notice with some people's websites how they like put the price point for all their workshops. I'm like, that's right. a good idea. Like someone's hired me like before for like a bachelorette party or like a bug spray workshop, oh, and cool. they've paid me. Yeah. You know, it's just been like friends, but it's like I can put that price oh, yeah. point no, business, on the yeah. website now. Like, and yeah. and I can't like just keep doing things for free. Yeah, forever. treat yourself official. Yeah, yeah. And other people will. So it's it's definitely coming together but when's your next event I feel like I want <laughs> you're talking about oils now or food what's yeah. your what's your goal <laughs> both yeah. but um uh, my my next oil like um class i'm doing like a basic intro class in, like next week at the casino 
but um but for food it's march 11th is that maple sugar thing if you're interested it's, and it's at, i think it's at st james episcopal church i can send you more info so you say yes i'm in march is that march 11th it's march 11th i have a i've also have an oil the, the the booth I'm going to be doing is a Native American only booth that month. But then I'm I've already got in at the St. James. At James no, no, that's for everybody. St. James Episcopal Church, March 11th. I believe I don't know the time off the top. I'm actually in touch with this woman right now, trying to trying to figure this out. Um, now what time was it? It's in New London. I have your card too, because I can so I can email you. Um, and I, yeah, I think we can email both of you the information. So that one's coming up, and then I'm going to do some at schools and things. You know, I've done a couple already. Um, but like I said, mostly they were more academic before, and I think it's like kind of like bridging to like it being more. So you like, haven't done any, like, I'm just, because we do a lot of the smaller shows, mm -hmm. you know, when we're doing the, uh, uh, the one in uh, Con College has one. Mm -hmm. Things like that, smaller, but and you can rent just a, a single space. Send me any information yeah. that you think would be useful because I personally have had, you know, I haven't been doing that kind of stuff at any shows yet because, again, I, I didn't have serve safe. I didn't, you know, right. what I mean, like until, like, I guess it was. I well, I mean, you need spring. more a volume of people yeah. to come to, but I don't know what the price, I don't know what the booth Just send me the info, but but is. the other thought is, like, you know, not to necessarily combine them in the way of, like, doing a, you know, you wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to, like, be selling oils while doing, like, really an educational lecture, but one thing one of my friends suggested was, like, there are a lot of, um, like, uh, not a lot, there's a couple websites where you can order, like, wild rice and things like that, like, native foods, he was, like, it's not a bad thought to start having it at some of your booths, like, if mm -hmm. you do that anyway, but it would just be having to, like, rebrand re yeah again it would be like yeah. does the purple go with all this kind i guess it could you know what i mean it would kind of be like another step so it's yeah. like first get this all squared away if i want to start adding like whether it be olive oils or other food products mm -hmm. i mean it's gonna take other i would say focus on what you're good at and yeah. get really really good at it and then once you're you know an established brand feel like you can focus on that um, I would absolutely branch out to other things. Yeah, but definitely just send me any info, you know, you think something would be useful. I appreciate it. I mean, I appreciate that you're motivated to help me. That's, yeah. That, that's well, there's a lot, I mean, that's something. There's a lot of shows, and again, I don't know what the yeah, the, the cost, cost is the is. issue. The cost right, is the issue that I've encountered. That. Yeah, because, you like, know. especially with, like, probably with the food, too, like, it's, it's not going to be any different unless it was, like, something gourmet I was making. But, like, with the oils, it's, like, if I'm only going to make like a couple hundred bucks at the most of these things, like I can't pay 200 bucks. So, right. you know, most of the health expos are expensive. I think because they have doctors and stuff that come. So total life, I'm lucky because it's, you know, Connecticut made market. Right. But most of those health expos, like, it's just not worth the money for me. Like even like some of the summer expos, it's hard. Well, I mean, you're starting to, I mean, even some of the local, uh, like, like St. James, the churches, communities have their, their town type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the town type things are expensive too, though, uh -huh. some of them. Like, I did the East Lime Fest, again, without a tent, which probably could have affected my sales. Right. But it was, like, 150 bucks, and I don't even think I made my money back that day. Mm -hmm. And that could have been because of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I also didn't have, like, like you know, at that point, my logo and everything wasn't mm -hmm. really at all. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't know they're getting a high-quality product. They're going to walk right past. Right. Um, and still value. Yeah. Well, listen, so that's a draw, I'm trying to draw them in. You know, you can just be there with me every yeah. time. Just show up at my events. Sounds like you're ready to be my, you know. <laughs> I did that. I'm just you're listening and it was, it was coming to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's signing up for all sorts Listen. of stuff. <laughs> this has been really fun. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I hope. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I hope thank you, you so much. Got everything that you wanted and more. Um, at Julia Balfour, we do websites, social media, programming, marketing. Um, so you have my card if any of that comes up. Yeah, so she can guide you. Yeah. yeah, is all the pricing on the website or do I email not. you to ask about yeah. the specifics? Yeah, talk to me because I'm uh, the person that will answer the phone when you call to talk okay. about that. Yeah. Can you answer any of the questions real quick right now or are you... <laughs> yeah, what are you looking for? I was website? wondering about the website. <laughs> so we have a small business line of websites that mm -hmm. is called Jewel, which is what I run. Mm -hmm. um, and those start at like about 8000 to 10000 Oh, wow. So those are more expensive, yeah. Um, I think I'm better off building my own for now. For a small business like yours, yeah, I hate to say it, and the boss would never allow me to say it, but Squarespace is a pretty okay option. Yeah, we were Let's debating see. between Wix and Squarespace. Like, Don't do Wix. Why? <laughs> it's it, They insist on having their branding all over it, um, and I think that there's a lot less customization that's available. Um, like, again, I've 
worked with people that are trying to transition from a Squarespace to like a custom website mm -hmm. um, and they have really limited capabilities um, so it's always refreshing for me to see like oh no we can do that like for real but for what it does Squarespace is a pretty good option yeah I wasn't sure you know I mean I have friends who do both but I didn't I didn't know that they put their brand all over it or anything like that I, was, I just was told that Wix might be easier and I'm not like a web designer mm -hmm. so I mean is it is it really that much easier probably not um, I think Squarespace is pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Wix, they, it says like Wix all over and Squarespace doesn't do that. It's a small Okay. Because I already bought the domain. I just haven't put Perfect. any, I haven't, I haven't linked anything to the domain. Yeah. Like, it's just rachelsayit.com right now, which I don't even know if it was the best choice, but I think because I'm doing the two components, mm -hmm. I didn't want to call it Rachel Best Healing Therapies. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, now I'm trying to figure out, so what is it going to be like? RachelSayit.com slash oils or like slash Rachel Best Healing Therapy is way too long. Right. You know what I mean? So I kind of have to figure that out next. Let's like see. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, like Did she was going to add to the cards and everything that website eventually, obviously. Oh, yeah. And to the, and to the bottles themselves even. Or if it doesn't fit on the bottle, like she'll put it on the, um, like the info sheet. But, um, my recommendation is always consistency is key. So, um, Whatever people call the business, pay attention to that because that, that will often change in the first mm -hmm. like two years of a business. Um, we work with this photographer that um, she's Polish and her last name, I cannot pronounce it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was trying to rebrand like using that last name and we're like, no, Anya, nobody calls you that. What do people say when they ask for your services and they say like, mm -hmm. Anya takes photos. So we're like, we're going to call your business Anya takes photos. Mm -hmm. um, so we bought that URL and that's her, the name of her business, her URL. Um, and it just makes sense because that's what people are going to Google. It's what people are asking for socially. Um, so yeah, I know. And that's why I was like, should I have put it as Rachel Best Healing? Like right yeah. after I did it. But then I was like, but I'm trying to do multiple components of this website. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could always, you know, buy another one, but I don't know. I'll figure it out. A couple I mean, of people domains, know yeah. my name. I mean, they do know my name. They do know that name too. So um, I don't think it's yeah. going to be terrible. Yeah, we like a uh, brand as a name too, as you can tell. Julia Balfour. It's, I'm not Julia, but that's. The yeah, one. at first we thought <laughs> you were probably going to be Julia. <laughs> I did, anyways. But oh, yeah. Julia is like a Kate Spade or a, um, an unknown entity with mm -hmm. many, many people. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's, I mean, it might be good to just keep it as my name for now then. Because the, if I'm doing multiple things, there's no reason to, to limit it. I agree. Yeah, if it's just called essential oils for now, then yeah, you've limited yourself to doing that. Essential, mm -hmm. right. Right. The Rachel Beth Healing Therapies could incorporate other things, but it's just... Well, your names will Rachel be the Beth brand. Healing. Yeah. Under that, so... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, look at me. You're going to be talk. Yeah, you can pay. You can have some ideas about it. I have no problem with that, you know. I, w I was actually considering, I was like, would I... Would I the home show i just think of i first of all i don't know what the price is even mm -hmm. i'm sure like, it's i'm sure it's it's up there i mean i didn't know, know if maybe there was like a like some type of like i don't Can know I, I, i'll give just one thing because I, I do it myself with our i take our awning we have an awning van it's mm -hmm. all plastered and stuff i take a table that's up and it's it's a lot of people for a short time it's called tax sale on the green in colchester connecticut mm -hmm. Tag sell um, on the green. Tag sell on the green. You gotta email it. me this stuff. I, it's gonna go into all. Well, I'll send it to you. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm just thinking of it you know that's good. something I know about. I've done it. There's a lot of people. It's on a one day, so you're not tying up all your time. Mm 